This is the Sales Bible Podcast, episode 292, Networking Tips Don't Sell on the Spot, an interview with returning guests, Zach and Jessica DeFries. Welcome to Sales Babble, the podcast that shares selling secrets for non-sellers. And now your host, Pat Helmers. Hello, sales babblers. This is Pat Helmers, and we're back at the Fox Build Studio with Zach and Jessica DeFries. Up to now, and if you haven't listened already, that's episode 291, the one from last week. Well, we babbled about how they met at a training for selling books in Nashville, Tennessee. And where we left off, we were talking about the inherent goodness of people, how selling's a long game, and that it's played on the field of trust. But now, in this episode, we're going to dig deeper into relationship building and how they do this in real estate and bespoke clothing industries. We've got concrete advice and practices that they use to network for business development, and all that we talk about is 100% applicable to you and your selling. Things like how to start up a conversation, how to connect emotionally with strangers, how you can spark openness, how to nurture people to share their desires, their challenges, and to provide you the opportunity to see if they're qualified for your product or service. But even more importantly, how you can help them, which may or may not result in a sale, but the relationship you build could lead to people that they know, others who are better qualified for what you have. Like, you've heard that it's not about what you know, but who you know. Yeah, right. That's where we're going here. So with no further ado, let's get to it. Welcome, Jessica. Welcome, Zach. Are you ready to babble again? Yes. Let's do it. Let's Here do it is a whole week later. <laughs> Boy, it's been a long time since I've seen you. <laughs> um. As you know, we've been talking, we've been, we babbled a lot last week and mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to pick up where we left off. Okay. Okay. Sure. Babble around time. What's fun about you guys is that you're both in sales, like really in it. Really in it. Like every day. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's that like? Well, it's interesting. Uh, one of the great things um, that I feel very fortunate is that because we're both in sales, we have many coaches. So mm -hmm. if I'm having a challenging day or challenging client or something, Zach can help coach me through it. And that's been really great and vice versa. And luckily, we've never had in the same day, both of us needing a coach. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it's never happened where it's like both of us are down and need. So when that day happens, Pat, we may be giving you a call. <laughs> right? call you we, know, we need your help. I'm always peppy. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always, I'm always. Yeah. So, uh, so that, that's been very, uh, it's, it's, I feel like we're very fortunate that way. Um, and we're also very fortunate in the, in the fact, I think a lot of people are, um, intimidated by sales that aren't in sales that maybe are in a corporate job or a set, you know, nine to five, because there's so much uncertainty in sales, right? And it's, you know, well, I don't know. The paycheck's not guaranteed. Is the paycheck guaranteed in a corporate job? Debatable. I know. I know it's not. Right. I, I just learned. I just learned three days ago. My niece is getting laid off from a company Jeez. that's doesn't lay anybody off. And that's brutal, uh -huh. right? And it's yeah. totally out of the blue. In sales, because we did the internship and uh, sold books door to door, we learned to put the um, – basically, if we work hard and have the right attitude, it's going to work out. And I'd rather put my – I'd rather bet on my effort and my ability to go to work and to work hard to bring in the income and, and to produce than – just showing up and hoping I get my paycheck. You know, it's just, it's a different mentality. It's a paradigm shift. It's a different mentality. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of the oddballs, I feel like, in a lot of ways, because we never got into corporate America. We, you know, fresh out of college, entrepreneurs, like self-starters, grueling, like door-to-door, -door, 80 hours, weeks, and then um, switch to, so I got a little intense bang, there. You're banging on that table. <laughs> I told you not to bang on this table. <laughs> Give her a hammer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it literally boings. <laughs> I'll stop that. Uh, but anyways, but so we, 
we are, again, I think we're just oddballs because we got into be, to be entrepreneurs very young and then didn't do the traditional college, corporate America. You know, we, we've always been in sales and commission based, 100% commission based. And it, me not knowing the other side, I would never go the other side because it's this side I know I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do what I need to do and I'm going to be able to produce and provide an income that in its way is actually more dependable and reliable than a set salary paycheck. It's kind of interesting. Well, we, you know, both Jess and I, we, I graduated during the recession and luckily I was doing the internship. Oh, that was tough. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. My oldest son, that happened to him. Yeah. Oh, that was mm-hmm. brutal. And I think, you know, when you, especially when you're in college and you graduate and not too many places are hiring, not saying that there weren't places that were hiring, but I know for me, that gave me a lasting kind of effect of, Hey, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to put pressure on myself to get things done and to make things happen. And I feel like a lot of millennials, you know, millennials can get a little bit of a bad rap, but I feel like a lot of millennials have that same attitude of if it's meant to be, it's up to me and I want to make things happen. And, and that's what, what, what we love about really in sales is the freedom. You know, we love, Mm -hmm. yeah, we work really hard. And I think any entrepreneur likes this, you work hard, but then you also have that freedom associated with it too that you're your own boss. You're the one that's, yeah, I'm working a little bit later, but I'm the one that's in charge of that. I'm the one that's doing that. You get that. to choose. You get to choose what clients you work with too. No. Right? I mean, uh, fund- we could always say no. Absolutely. Yeah. We have that option. That's true about all salespeople. All sales. <laughs> right? Boss, you can decide who do you want to work with. Yeah, the boss never knows. If you're on, you know, <laughs> you're cold calling someone, you're talking to them going, this guy's a jerk. I just don't want to deal with him. Right. Sorry, yeah. I have a bad connection. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the beauty of it, right? You yeah. can decide who you want to spend your time with and say yeah. no, and now maybe you're going to miss out on a paycheck. And, but. and I'll say to this too, the other cool thing about um, us being married, both being in sales is you wouldn't believe it listening to her talk on the uh, on this, but um, my wife is actually a introvert. She's more of an ambivert now, but Jess is actually a little bit more of an introvert, and I'm much more of an extrovert. And one of the things that I love is sometimes when I'm just trying to wrap my head around a new client or I'm having an issue with something, she's able to bring a really unique and different perspective to the mm-hmm. table. And I think that happens in any marriage if you have those open avenues of communication, you know, and and instead of trying to like look at, oh, how we're different, all this stuff. It's more so learn to appreciate the other person for their differences because they bring something else to the table that you might not be able to see. And it's a great way of looking over a problem, overcoming stuff. And it's it's really just, it's helped out our marriage so much. It's been awesome. We're total opposites. Now, I know another couple that I've known for many years who I really respect and they're both in sales. And in fact, they've often worked for the same company. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I've been trying to get them on the podcast, mm. but <laughs> I'm still going to work on that. What company is that? Yeah, I won't say. Okay. okay <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I was curious. <laughs> I'm curious. My friends call me Whiskers. <laughs> um, have you ever thought about doing that? Or let, let me ask the question I really want to ask. You ever think about starting a company together? Yes. We actually did. Yeah. <laughs> When we first were getting into our current roles, uh, originally, Zach was going to be the one that was going to get into real estate. Yes. So long story short, when we were dating, we were kind of interviewing with different companies. And um, actually, I interviewed with her company. And uh, at the time, I'd kind of already committed to Tom James, where I'm at. But... uh, they had heard a little bit about Jess and going on the record, Jess absolutely kicked my butt in the Southwestern internship. She did much better than I did. And they heard about her and the owner of her company, her managing broker actually flew her up to interview her and was just blown away by her and ended up offering (laughs) her the job. And um, it was okay. I mean, I was, I was like 99% Tom James. You didn't want the job. I love that's but, I didn't um, want it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, so we have we have thought about it. And and since then, you know, past that, you're doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. But we have we have considered I think there's some bets in our families of one of us joining the other and, you know, all that kind of stuff eventually. <laughs> but uh it, you know, we like the differentiation. Mm-hmm. I think we could do the I, same. I could see that. 
Yeah. Because I think that's what's powerful with my wife and I is the fact that we're yeah. in such very different businesses. You know, at dinner at night. You're yeah. not talking about the same client. You're able to talk about different things. And, and we coach each other through, too. Yep. Issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we, we, we like yeah. having it different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. They say a startup needs a, um, a hacker, a hipster, and a hustler. Hmm. Hipster in your business, hustler. you would have two hustlers. <laughs> yeah. No hackers. <laughs> That'd no be a hipster. problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is kind of hipstery. This is. He is kind of looking like a little hipster. A little bit. <laughs> My youngest son dresses just like this. Stylish. He looks sharp. Did you hear that, honey? I got style. I'm like I a, hope you have style. I'm like a young were... high schooler. Clothing company. How old is he? Uh, 26 or 7. All right. I'll mm-hmm. take it. 27. All right. <laughs> Look at you. He's a sales guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and it's funny, too, because um, a lot of people are like, oh, like, you know, you got the sales gene or you got the sales thing. And I think Jess is, is such good living proof of this that there are some people that are more inherently better at sales just naturally, right? But the cool thing is, like, she was a well, – honey, explain your, your major in college, like, because it's pretty Statistics, unique. math, decision, yeah. sciences, yeah. Like, So I wanted to be an actuary. I not, went down a different path. Not sales. But that's the point of this podcast, actually, to a certain degree. Yeah. It's selling secrets for non-sellers. Mm. Now, I I'll, I agree with you mm-hmm. that some people are just going to be better at sales than other people. But I believe that anybody can be okay at it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and actually kind of enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because if you got an attitude, I believe you have that right attitude of like most people are nice, like you said. That people got challenges and that I can help them, if I, you know, that my thing's actually going to make their lives better. Well, th- that's going to be very gratifying. Yeah. And yep. if you believe in what you're selling, that's most of it. Absolutely. And if you don't believe in what you're selling, and this is something I, I, I try to repeat on here a lot, quit. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's going against your like quit. core. Like that's just, no. Well, and it will show too. It will show right away. Oh, yeah. It's you, just you, not. You're just sweeping the dirt under the rug. If you yep. feel like you're manipulating people and like twisting their arm and that's not the way it needs to be. Find no. you know, you can find something else that you can believe in and get behind. I know we've kind of meandered a little bit here, but but not necessarily. I yeah. think um let's wrap this up. If you could give I always say the same thing, and probably people are tired of hearing it or not. But I, but I want people to walk away with something that they can take away with, that they can actually do something with. That it just isn't just some thought that's sitting on their head. What's something that people could do this week that they could take action on that would make a difference in their selling? Hmm. Hmm. I would say probably the 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 best thing somebody could do would be to put pen to paper. And write out in a day, like all the things that they do, all the tasks that you do. And let's say there's 10 different things that you do in a day. And then what I would say is circle the one, two, or maybe three. There's usually not more than three things in sales that generate income for you. And the idea there is that's the Pareto principle, 80-20. I love it. 20% of what you do yields 80% this. of the results, right? <laughs> But there's so much stuff we do, answering emails, checking texts, all that stuff. In my job, there's really only two things that I do that increase my paycheck, that get direct results, and that's either being in front of people or calling them to set an appointment. And the more that you can just focus on those one or two things and delegate everything else or minimize everything else, that right there, within a couple of weeks, if you just focus on those couple of things, those key activity areas... That right there will dramatically change your business, dramatically change your sales, everything. I don't think you could top that. <laughs> can, Sorry, honey. I'm just going to go home she now. Can't can you top that? She can. She's got better <laughs> stuff than me. <laughs> Actually, what's funny, Jess was like, I'm going to share the Pareto principle. And I'm like, oh, He's I'm stolen. Notes. He's stolen. <laughs> I'm kidding. We were just talking about that. Though. I yeah. love the Pareto principle. We hardly ever talk right. about that. Great. A lot of we people literally are just... not cognizant of it. But you're the... But you're the statistician. Yes. So you're all over that. Pareto all the way. We literally were just talking about this. We were. Yeah. But, but, let's, but, be, let's be pr- really clear what the Pareto principle is. Yeah, because it's a great. It applies to so many things. What's, what's the Pareto principle? Well, um, fundamentally, what was it in uh, in Italy? It was a, Pareto? Um, Pareto was an Italian economist. Mm, I think so. And he discovered that... Uh, Eighty percent of the wealth in the country was held by twenty percent of the people, 
And what he found is that he was going through and, um, you know, the land ownership and all these other things. It applied to so many different areas. Um, so it, now in sales, you can really look at it that um, 80% of the results and the income that you produce comes from 20% or less of the activities and time that you're spending, yep. essentially. And, and the, the wild thing and, is it correlates to like nature too. Everything. It correlates to everything. 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 Like my wife will see this at school. That she that eighty percent of her time is spent on twenty percent of the kids. Yeah. Yep. It's kind of and she feels bad wild. about those other eighty percent. Uh, those other eighty percent of the kids don't get any of her time mm -hmm. because they're they're kind of okay. It's the it's the troublemakers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. It, the same thing is true in management. Mm -hmm. Yep. If with your staff, twenty percent you spend eighty percent of your time with twenty percent of your staff. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's why it's important to know the Pareto Principle. And the other th thing about the Pareto Principle, too, is you should be working on the top three issues. Mm. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Only on the top three issues. Mm -hmm. And then you wipe them out. Mm -hmm. yep. And then let everything rejigger and you'll have another top three show up. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> there's always another set of problems. <laughs> yes. And you just keep working on them in threes, in groups yep. of threes. Well, the other thing, too, because I've built a referral-based business. So it applies to when I look at my um, – you know, connections and the relationships that I built, 80% uh, of my business and referrals come from 20% of my people. So making sure I take care of those people and, and you know, mm. make them feel appreciated and, and thankful for how they support me. I do have a tip, though. I, I was not going to let you get by without one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go a little Dale Carnegie here, how to win friends and influence people. And uh, the it's fundamentally, I think, um, the world is like, and we were talking about this at the roundhouse, the world's craving authenticity in mm -hmm. sales, right? So people are on hyper alert. What are you trying to sell me? Everywhere they go. I mean, no matter where you're at. So being authentic is really what it's about. And now I, I can't make you be authentic, but uh, the the best advice is that when you're, if you will intentionally, when you're meeting people and when you're, you know, going through this week and you're making new connections and meeting people, taking a genuine interest in other people, genuinely, and asking more questions. This is something that I actually learned recently, and maybe I, I naturally kind of did it, but it, it's helped me where before you start talking about yourself and you start, um, you know, blabbing on, ask three questions to that person that you're talking to before you start talking about yourself. So th this was a really interesting thing. Um, and to be honest, I realized that when Zach would come home and, you know, we'd, we'd catch up, I'd like start talking about my day and, um, and, and not really asking about his day. And so I was, I've been using this lately and I don't know if he's noticed, but I, uh, I have noticed, <laughs> but I practice it on him and, Literally, you know, when you first, when you're interacting with somebody and you're having a conversation, hey, how, how are you? Okay, great. Um, where are you from originally? I mean, you can ask the basic questions, but it's getting three questions before you start talking about yourself. And if you just do that, it, it's, it's great because guess what? People like talking about themselves. Look at me babbling on right now. Um, it's, it's amazing. Um, I do this. Yeah. Okay, so you already naturally do it. I do We've this. We've noticed this about you. Yeah. Yes, I and do that's this what we, naturally. It's great. But See, it, you know what's fun about it though is it, then people get curious. You're like, well, what's this guy about? Yeah. Then they start getting generally curious. You haven't talked about yourself at all. What do you do? Some people. Sometimes people really like talking about themselves. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but most of the time, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some people are like that, and and I've also found they're they're high they're unlikely to be qualified. Buyers. Yes. No. yes, yes. <laughs> They're so in themselves. A lot of air. <laughs> it happens. But 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 sharp people will go. Well, they get curious about. Yeah, it. They're you like, know, oh, I feel so good right now. I want to know more about you. And, you know, yes. it's a natural thing. Like, oh, I, I feel so great. Nobody asked me about me, and they naturally want to know about you. And it's yeah. take it's being genuine though when you ask the questions. That's the key. Uh, that's true. <laughs> right. Because sincerity is everything. Once you fake that, the yeah. world is yours. <laughs> Wait, what? Say that one more time. I never heard this one. Say that one more time. Sincerity is everything. Once you can fake that, the world is yours. Uh, <laughs> never heard that. Yeah. 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 Oh. 
But it, I mean, and, and the great thing about that too is like, even if you're not in sales, you just want to be a better conversationalist. It's just called building sincere, authentic relationships. If you just want to, you know, have more friends and go to parties and be able to talk to more people, go up to them and just ask about yeah. them. And it's fun too. It's fun learning about people. We're so focused on ourselves. We're too focused on ourselves. We're so worried about what we're going to say, how we're going to come across. Guess what? Most people aren't even thinking about you. No one's thinking about you. <laughs> Nobody. I wonder if they're going to notice. Unless you have something like on your face and you uh, look kind of crazy. I wonder if they're going to but... notice my shoes scuffed. I meant to polish right. them before I walked out. Guess what? They're thinking about their shoes and if their <laughs> shoes are scuffed. That okay. is true. Yeah. And this really needs to be underlined. Yes. People don't. They don't care about. They don't. They're not thinking about you. We get so caught up in that. It's never the case. And, and the goofy thing too is this is the goofy thing. People want to do what they want to do, and not be told what to do. Mm-hmm. But all, but it only takes. But they're so about themselves that all it takes is someone to say one bad thing to them. Like, actually, I don't like that coat. That's yeah. a that's a custom coat. I, actually, I don't like that. It looks like something off of Walmart. <laughs> How dare you? Double. And, and then all of a sudden, you like, burst. You, people like get on this and they can't let it go. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't care what people think and you want to be your own thing, why do you let somebody own you for like an hour about this? Yeah. And that yes. just, that just, it's just the goofiest things. It's just the goofiest. How well, the most, are. I feel like we're rambling, but I'm just having good thoughts right now. And Something that I just thought of. <laughs> sure, he can edit. Doesn't he happen all the time. <laughs> this is really running long. Okay. <laughs> no, sure. No. Last thought. Okay. Uh, so to that point, um, there's a lot of power in being able to take a compliment. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of people do not know how to take a compliment. Mm -mm. And why is that? I don't know. Well, <laughs> it's... People can't convince you of something that you aren't already convinced about yourself. Say that again. Does that make sense? Yes. I think you should say it again to the viewers. People because can't convince you of something that you don't already believe about yourself. And I learned I, this has been a hard thing that I've learned to be able to take and accept a compliment. Because what do most people do? Hey, Pat. Um, you know, that's a great shirt that you're wearing. I really like your shirt. Oh, it's nothing really. You know. It's... Oh, I just got this thing at yeah, Goodwill. Just, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. It was a good deal at Goodwill. What does that do? What does that do to the person that gave you the compliment? It makes them feel bad. Throws it back in their face, right? It's kind of rejecting. I reject. It's like you have bad judgment if you think that's a good shirt. Yeah. Oh, this that whole I bought. thing. It rejects yeah. them. Doesn't make that person feel good, and no. we're doing it because we feel like it's a self-preservation. Like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be that person. That's, but it actually does the opposite. Isn't yes, that crazy? That's right. Right. What you want to say is what I would say is like, oh, that's so kind of you. Yeah. That is really nice of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. All. Here's how you accept a compliment. Do you want to know? Do you want to practice it? Okay. All right. Hey, Pat. That's a great shirt you're wearing. I really like that. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> All you have to do is say thank you. <laughs> a sincere thank you. And it's, it's not Accept conceited. Accept it. It's no. not. Uh, no. That's what people are afraid of. And it's yeah. actually nope. the opposite when you reject it and say, oh, no, that, that's no, no. And the, the cool thing about that, too, is you are constantly, when you're doing that, you're constantly reinforcing your own positive affirmations about yourself, about who you are, because, and again, it's not conceited, but it's like, you know what? I am looking it's good. Confidence. Of confidence course, somebody, attractive. of course, somebody would come up and compliment me. Thank you for saying that. That's who I am. And it's, and it, that's so important, especially in sales, just to, to be able to have that armor of I'm confident who I am. I'm yeah. positive. Yeah. I mess up, but I do most things right. I'm not perfect, but today I was great. Those kind of things are just so important in sales to you can keep your head up. Confidence is it. What would you say? Like confidence is, is huge. I mean, when you're confident in yourself and you believe in your abilities and in sales, you need confidence. Yeah. And that's actually that's why I called the class that I wrote selling with confidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it comes from re repetition. If you do it over and over and over again, you don't you don't think twice on it. Yep. You know, 
like when you're you're tentative and you first learn how to drive a car. But after miles and miles being behind the wheel, you mm-hmm. you don't you, you barely even think about that you're driving anymore. Yep. You're fi- you're drinking your coffee and you're yeah, it's you're crazy. fiddling with the radio and mm-hmm. texting on your phone. No, don't do that. No, don't do don't that. Do that. No, but you listen to a podcast like yes, so fail, fail, right? So, can I say one last thing real quick? Mm-hmm. So, um, when when Jess and I first moved here and we started, like we were, and I think this is just one other important thing, just in sales. We did not have an amazing lifestyle by any means. We were both starting our careers, didn't know anybody. We drove cars that had almost 250,000 miles on them, barely did date night, things like that. And the idea was, was we knew we were building something really important. And when you can have a vision and a dream that you're going through and just kind of have that in front of you, and that's where you're going towards and you share that with the person that you love, that's so important. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, Napoleon Hill said, patience, persistence, and perseverance are a powerful combination. And that's, again, just something else. I just want anybody who is listening to this who's just starting out, it gets better because you get better. Mm-hmm. It's been really great having you guys back on the podcast. Um, if people want to find you online, where would they where would they go? Um, you can find me on Instagram at uh, ZD Haberdash. I've thrown some really cool photos, clothing, tips, things like that. Oh, yeah. I remember we talked about that last week. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> In Instagram. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, on LinkedIn and then TomJames.com backslash Zachary DeVries. We're big LinkedIn people here on Sales Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would expect that. Yep. You, Jessica? Well, the the truth is if somebody wants to find a realtor that helps manage the drama in real estate transactions, mm-hmm. I would be their girl. So <laughs> they can find me on <laughs> Google, Yelp, Facebook, business page. Um, really best ways just to send me an, a direct email at jdefries at southwestern.com. Excellent. What's your territory? How big? Well, um, I live in Naperville, and I cover really a 30-minute radius or so. So I'm western suburbs, out to Sugar Grove, Fox Valley area. Um, and again, I'm, I'm mostly referral-based, so I like to take good mm-hmm. care of people, and I'll go with where the referrals are. Most of my listeners are not here yeah. in Chicagoland. Well, to that point... I have a good network of realtors around the entire country. So um, if anybody needs a referral for somebody around the country, I can help connect them. And if anybody needed to figure out how to hire a good real estate agent. Yes, I can help with that. Cool. Yep. Cool beans. That's, cool. That's There's a lot of us out there. I believe you. Yep. I know. <laughs> and not a lot of good ones. There's a lot of us. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Guys, I really appreciate you visiting here on Sales Babble again, coming back this week. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us again. Thank you, Pat. It's been fun. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I really enjoy hanging out with these guys, talking to people who are working on the street and making sales. Do you like that I'm talking to people like this? Is that you? Have you got something you'd like to share on the podcast? If so, reach out. Let's babble. Because you may or may not know this, but I've got people three to four times a week reaching out to get on sales babble. A number of these people that reach out to me are not a good fit. They just want to get on every podcast that's out there. But if you got a point of view that's not been shared before, hey, babble me. Let's talk. Again, to connect with Zach and Jessica, go to the show notes at www.salesbabble.com slash 292, and you can find out all about them. That's all I've got for this week, folks. Until next week, take care and have a highly successful and a profitable selling day. Thank you for listening to the Sales Babble podcast. Find us at www.salesbabble.com. This is a production of Abenero Media.